ಶಾಂತಿಕಂ ವಂದೇಹಂ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರು ಶ್ರೀಯುತಾಪದಕಮಲ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರುಣ್ ವೈಷ್ಣವಾಂಶ ಶ್ರೀರೂಪ ಸಾಗ್ರಜಾತ ಸಹಗಣ ರಘುನಾಥ ತಾಂ ಸಜೀವ ಸಾಧ್ವೈತ ಸಾವದೂತ ಪರಿಜನ ಸಹಿತ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ದೇವ ಶ್ರೀರಾಧಾಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪಾದ ಸಹಗಣ ಲಳಿತ ಶ್ರೀ ವಿಶಾಖಾನ್ವಿತಾಂಶ ನಮ ಓಂ ವಿಷ್ಣು ಪಾದ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪ್ರೇಷ್ಟಾ ಭೂತಲೆ ಶ್ರೀಮತೆ ಭಕ್ತಿ ವೇದಾಂತ ಸ್ವಾಮಿನ್ ಇತಿ ನಾಮಿನೆ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಸಾರಸ್ವತಿ ದೇವೆ ಗೌರವಾಣಿ ಪ್ರಚಾರಿಣೆ ನಿರ್ವಿಶೇಷ ಶೂನ್ಯವಾದಿ ಪಾಶ್ಚಾತ್ಯ ದೇಶತಾರಿಣೆ ನಮೋ ಮಹಾವದನ್ಯಾಯ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪ್ರೇಮ ಪ್ರಧಾಯತೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣಾಯ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ನಾಮಿನೆ ಗೌರತ್ವಿಷೇ ನಮಃ ಹೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಕರುಣಾ ಸಿಂಧು ದೀನ ಬಂಧೋ ಜಗತ್ಪತೆ ಗೋಪೇಶ ಗೋಪಿಕಾ ಕಾಂತ ರಾಧಾ ಕಾಂತ ನಮೋಸ್ತು ತೇ ತಪ್ತ ಕಾಂಚನ ಗೌರಾಂಗೀ ರಾಧೇ ಬೃಂದಾವನೇಶ್ವರಿ ವೃಷಭಾನೋಸ್ತು ತೇ ದೇವಿ ಪ್ರಣಮಿ ಹರಿ ಪ್ರಿಯ ವಾಂಚಾಕಲ್ಪತರೂಪ್ಯ ಕೃಪಾ ಸಿಂಧೂಬ್ಯೇವ ಅತೀತ ಪಾವನೆಭ್ಯೋ ವೈಷ್ಣವೇಭ್ಯೋ ನಮೋ ನಮಃ ಜೈ ಶ್ರೀ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಪ್ರಭು ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಶ್ರೀ ಅದ್ವೈತ ಗದಾಧಾರ ಶ್ರೀವಾಸಾದಿ ಗೌರಭಕ್ತ ಬೃಂದ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೇ ಹರೇ Hare Krishna, um, hearty welcome to all the devotees. So, again, coming back to old way, online. So, in the previous weeks, we were discussing from third canto. We started with chapter 30 about the activities performed by a person in the mode of ignorance, Tamaguna. Then from chapter 31, we discussed about the life of a person in the mode of uh, passion. And then we discussed about the life of a person in the mode of goodness from chapter 32. Then in the previous two classes, we discussed about study of Sankhya and uh, the process and perfection of Jnana Yoga from chapter 26 and 27. So today we'll be discussing from uh, description of Tapasya and Vairagya as part of Ashtanga Yoga, the process of Ashtanga Yoga. How, when and where one practices Ashtanga Yoga and for what purpose one should practice Ashtanga Yoga, how one should perform Ashtanga Yoga. These are the few details we will discuss today and um, next week we will discuss the continuation of Ashtanga Yoga where what will be the perfection of Ashtanga Yoga how different people being influenced by different motives perform Ashtanga Yoga, etc. We will discuss next week. So, so with that background, so we'll start uh, from Canto 3, Chapter 28. So, but anyway, in one way, we are not fortunate enough to meet each other. But at the same time, we have a special opportunity today in order to use our slides. There we will not be able to use our slides. So we generally have dialectic way of presenting discussion only. So this chapter is a special chapter in the Bhagavatam. And why it is special, we will understand today. In due course of our presentation, all of you will realize how and why it is uh, special in the entire Bhagavatam. And uh, here in this chapter, Lord Kapila describes the process and perfection of Ashtanga Yoga. In the 28th chapter, meditation in the Ashtanga Yoga system is described in detail by which the yogi attains liberation without effort. So before discussing Ashtanga Yoga in chapter 28, Lord Kapila already discussed about Bhakti in chapter 25, which we are to discuss. In the upcoming weeks, we are going to discuss that. And he spoke about Sankhya, process and perfection of Sankhya in chapter 26 and 27. 
now the lord is going to begin ashtanga yoga in chapter 28 so a quick summary of what we have discussed in the previous uh, discussions at the same time traditionally as part of varnashrama system how the lifestyle used to be and where what they used to practice what they used to do what they used to learn etc here the brief overview as per my little understanding is presented during brahmachari ashram around 6 to 8 years after performing upanayana ceremony when the children are sent to gurukul in order to study under a able and bona fide guru they study so many things but primarily they study sankhya in the gurukul wherein they learn about the fundamental principles of the material nature what they learn at the end of the studies in gurukul the student is supposed to be educated about the 28 tatvas ishvara jeeva prakriti kala and karma as we study in bhagavad gita shri so prabhupada writes in the introduction that bhagavad gita principally talks about five tatvas it teaches us about ishvara it teaches us about jeeva it teaches us about prakriti also about kala and karma ishvara is the supreme lord jeeva is the living entity prakriti the material nature made up of the three modes sattva guna rajoguna tamaguna and kala the time which instigates prakriti into the manifestation of the universes and our bodies and kala instigates all of us so that we can perform activities being influenced by time we are performing all our activities that is called karma so there are the five tatvas from bhagavad gita but how do we perform karma karma is performed by the body which is made up of 24 elements the 24 elements are subgrouped as four antakaranas made up of mind intelligence ego and chetana man buddhi ahankara chetana and five gnanendriyas the knowledge acquiring senses the ears the skin the eyes the tongue the nostril and five karmendriyas the mouth the hands the legs anus and genital and five tanmatras the five qualities of the pancha mahabhutas that is uh, shabda rupa sorry shabda sparsha rupa rasa gandha and five pancha mahabhutas earth water fire and ether so all these 24 elements come together manifest or makes our body with which we perform all the different variety of activities which are called karma so what are the different roles and responsibilities of all these 28 elements is taught as part of sankhya by the end the student complete the studies will be well aware of what is what who does what etc and also educated about the practice of karma jnana yoga and bhakti so everything is taught in the gurukul only the students they learn about what to do how to do for one's livelihood everything is taught in the gurukul at the same time what to do and how to do for the purpose of attaining perfection is also taught in gurukul the teachings about karma jnana ashtanga yoga and bhakti are all very nicely presented in the gurukul itself so these are the principal teachings that are supposed to be given to the student in the gurukul then after completing the education the student returns home then gets married becomes a grahastha then based on whatever knowledge one had received in the gurukul with that knowledge one had one has to lead one's life if one is not at all studied anything in the gurukul that person is said to be in the mode of tamas ignorance and he simply performs vikarma in the gurukul we study what to do and how to do since he has not studied anything he will do everything the opposite of order vikarma viruddha rupena karma so as a result of performing all such activities sinful activities such a person goes to hell and takes birth in the lower species and finally after passing through all the 80 lakh species one day eventually becomes human being and by the way while pope going through naraka and other lower species he understand that i should not do such kind of sinful activities once again 
he slowly raises his consciousness from ignorance to passion. So in the passion also still performs vikarma because he is motivated by selfish desires for on so on mind and body uh, and for the purpose of fulfilling desires in relation to the opposite sex, he simply performs sinful activities and also goes to hell and takes birth in lower species sometimes, but in general takes birth as a human being again. So like that. But having understood that one need to take shelter of Shastra, one need to follow the instructions of Shastra, with that understanding, when he starts practicing Shastra, he is situated in the mode of goodness. Then he performs Sakama Karma. That means whatever rules and regulations, whatever prescriptions that are given in the Vedic literature, he uses all of them to become more and more prosperous and happy in this world and also perform special rituals in order to go to heaven. So, as a result of leading such kind of a household life, generally they take birth in aristocratic family in their next life, sometimes because they have performed so many special rituals in order to go to Swarga, they either go to Pitruloka or Swarga Loka. Sometimes, not necessarily always, but sometimes they go by good fortune. But if they understand purpose of life is not just to perform Sakama Karma, perform all the Vedic rituals for one's own enjoyment. Instead, one understands that one should perform all the Vedic rules and regulations with the detachment, Nishkama Karma, for the benefit of the society and country and humanhood, manhood, etc. Such kind of person is said to be performing Nishkama Karma, a philanthropist, we can say. So that person, as a result of dedicating one's life completely in the service of society and mankind will go to Pitruloka or Svargaloka. After the piety is over, after the pious rates are over, then takes birth in aristocratic family. And again continues such kind of humanitarian works, again goes to Pitruloka and comes back. It's like that. Following all the rules and regulations of the Vedic rituals. Not ordinary philanthropy, but philanthropy guided by Vedic literature. So in that way. But the best person, the best form of Gurasa is that person who performs Nishkama Karma Yoga, performs all the activities as a matter of duty in the Gurasta order, but offers all the results in the service of the Supreme Lord. So that person is said to be Nishkama Karma Yogi. So Shastra says that. For a person, whoever performs Nishkama Karma Yoga throughout their tenure in the Grastha Ashram, if they die, they will be promoted to heaven. But before death, they make up their mind that I don't want to go to heaven. They make their resolve that I don't want to go to heaven, but I want to work hard in order to attain liberation. They are qualified to take on to renunciation. Those people who have courage to say no to heavenly opulence and heavenly enjoyment, only they are qualified to take unto Vanaprastha order and Sanyasa order. So thus, rejecting heavenly enjoyment, focusing on the attainment of liberation, they take on to renounced order of life, either Vanaprastha or Sanyasa. Or first to Vanaprastha and then eventually to Sanyasa, so that they can practice Jnana Yoga and eventually Ashtanga Yoga or sometimes they can directly practice Ashtanga Yoga in order to attain Sahaja Mukti. This is how Shastra prescribes who has to do what. This is a simple understanding. Those who say no to sinful activities in the mode of ignorance, they are qualified to raise their conscience to mode of passion. And they, they don't perform gross sinful activities, but sometimes because they are motivated by selfish desire, they may perform some superficial sinful activities. As a result, they take birth in the human life only. But if they say no to that also, then they are qualified to hear Shastra. They develop faith to hear Shastra. 
where they perform Vedic rituals and follow Vedic ritual, Vedic rules and regulations. As a result, they may get birth in aristocratic family or sometimes they may promote it to uh, Pitruloka or even. But if they say no to their selfish enjoyment, they are qualified to extend their life in the service of society and nation, following the rules and regulations of Vedic culture. If they say no to that, um, as a result of that, they are qualified to go to heaven because the entire life, they live a life of selflessness, life of sacrifice. Shastra says that such kind of people are promoted to heaven at the end of their life. But if they have the courage to say no to heavenly enjoyment, they are qualified to take on to our renounced order because they have already cultivated the detachment throughout the gross order. Now they can enter into Vanaprasa or Sannyasa order so that they can live happily in the Vanaprasa order without any grudging or without any remorse. And they are qualified to practice Jnana Yoga or Ashtanga Yoga in order to attain perfection in the form of Saijya Mukti or Sarishti or Salokya. So then they take to the renounced order, either Vanaprasa or Sanyasa. Then they can practice Jnana Yoga or Ashtanga Yoga 24 by 7. So, there are some people who perform Sakama Jnana. Even after entering to renounced order, they practice Sakama Jnana with a selfish motivated Jnana. They become great scholars and they get Pujala Pratishta. As a, as a result of their uh, renounced, uh, as a result of their detachment and renounced order and austerities, etc., they'll go to Swarga and get aristocratic birth in the next life. Because still, even though in spite of going to renounced order, they still are hankering for Pujala, Pratishta and scholarship. They are, they are not qualified to get Mukti. But on the other hand, those, who pe those people, those jnanis would not have any desire for scholarship, would not have any desire for Pujala Pratishta. They practice Nishkama Jnana Yoga. No material ambitions, no material desires. Thus, by, deal, by leading a life of austerities and cultivating Jnana, which one had studied in Gurukul, because in the Gurukul only they have studied about Sankhya, that is Jnana. They have studied about Tapasya, how to practice Tapasya, etc. Now they are implementing in the Vanaprasa Sanyas order along with the practice of bhakti, such kind of person will attain Saijya Mukti, impersonal liberation. Because that is what they desire. They want, they, they perform all these uh, Nishkama Karma activities as a householder and Nishkama Jnana activities as a renounced order in order to attain Saijya Mukti. That is what they attain. So, such kind of a Jnani, after perfecting Jnana, having come to Jivan Mukta platform, they have two options. They can wait for their natural death so that they can attain impersonal liberation or they can take shelter of Ashtanga Yoga in order to leave the body quickly and attain liberation very quickly. That option is available for the Jnanis who performed Jnana, who perfected Jnana, who came to the platform of Brahmavuta platform, self-realization. Then by taking shelter of Ashtanga Yoga, they can attain liberation instantly or they have to wait for natural death. So some people after practicing Jnana take on to Ashtanga Yoga and perfect their life, attain Moksha or some people immediately after entering into renounced order, either Vanaprasa or Sanyasa, they immediately start practicing Ashtanga Yoga in order to attain liberation because they have already attained thorough detachment from this material world. They don't want to stay anymore in this material world. Such kind of people practice Ashtanga Yoga immediately. But within that Ashtanga Yoga, there are two categories of people. Some practice Sakama Ashtanga Yoga with some selfish motive. Such kind of people attains eight mystic siddhis and great scholarship also gets Pujala Pratishta. Because they are practicing Ashtanga Yoga with some selfish motives, they are not qualified to attain Sahaja Mukti. Instead, they go to Sarga and Eventually, they get aristocratic birth in their next life. But those who are completely dedicated their life with full of detachment in order to attain Sahaja Mukti, 
they do not have any selfish desire such as attaining a mystic siddhis or scholarship or puja la pratishta they simply lead a life of complete renunciation and cultivating jnana and by the practice of ashtanga yoga which one had studied in gurukul along with the practice of bhakti one eventually attains saidya mukti and according to their desire they also enters into vaikuntha with sarishti or salokya mukti so this is the traditional way of practicing their life according to varnashram system as a brahmachari they go to gurukul study shastra especially study 28 sankhya yoga and also study about uh, what is karma what is jnana what is yoga what is bhakti how to practice them like that then they after completing their education they come home get married Supp they are supposed to be practicing nishkama karma yoga as a result of that they develop enough detachment then they take on to renounced order either vana prasa and or vana prasa and then sanyas there they practice jnana yoga or ashtanga yoga along with bhakti yoga as a result of that they attain saidya mukti sometimes by good fortune they also attain sarishti or salokya mukti this is the traditional way of attaining perfection but while doing all these practices they should also practice bhakti from the very beginning without bhakti none of these practices can give one the expected results so today now let us discuss about how to practice ashtanga yoga ashtanga yoga is basically has eight angas yama niyama asana pranayama pratyahara dharana dhyana and samadhi so let us try to discuss about what are these eight stages of ashtanga yoga what one is supposed to do in each and every stage and uh, what kind of lifestyle they should lead etc etc let us get into the chapter so in the previous classes i used to discuss referring to the book i was presenting summarily the details of all the verses like a story type like a prose but today since we are using slides also i will recite all the shlokas and i will explain the shlokas so that um, we can use the opportunity of this online class so starting from shloka 1 sri bhagavan uvacha yogasya lakshanam vakshe sabijasya drupatmaje mano yena eva vidina prasannam yati satpatam so here lord kapila is saying that now i shall speak about the characteristics of ashtanga yoga which is dependent on bhakti by following which the mind attains joyful spiritual path the mind becomes joyful while practicing and eventually the soul enters into saidya mukti at the end of the practice so basically lord kapila now going to discuss about ashtanga yoga mixed with bhakti so now for those people who are dedicated their life in order to attain saidya mukti by the practice of ashtanga yoga but before actually practicing ashtanga yoga one need to lead the life of grahastha order very uh, sanely as it is indicated here basically the first two limbs of ashtanga yoga yama and niyama yama means niyama means the rules which are supposed to be followed yama means the prohibitions which are not supposed to be which are supposed to be avoided so these yama and niyama rules and regulations are supposed to be practiced when one is a grahastha as long as one is leading a household order they need to practice yama and niyama then after completing all the household responsibilities after getting enough detachment then they should take on to renounce order vana prasar sanyasa they should go to a forest find a suitable place in order to practice the remaining parts of the ashtanga yoga so what does this yama and niyama contains in first three four verses gives a detailed explanation not details but a quick quick summary of that rules and regulations are mentioned here swadharma charanam sakya vidharma cha nivartanam daival labdena santosha atmavi charana char charanarchanam it is said that one must follow one's duties of varnashrama to the best of one's ability so basically now one is 
in household order one may be a brahmana kshatriya vaishya or shudra whoever it may be they should practice their varna duties properly swadharma acharanam sakya that means they should practice their varna duties a brahmana household is supposed to practice brahmanical duties a kshatriya household is supposed to practice kshatriya duties vaishya household is supposed to practice vaishya duties like that and avoid sin vidharmatna nivartitam one should never ever perform sinful activities in the household order and one should be satisfied with what comes of its own accord daiva labdena santosha whatever comes by the order of the destiny one should be satisfied because if one is satisfied with whatever one has one has more time for spiritual practices if one is not satisfied one has to work hard to get more and more to fulfill their desires then all the time and energy goes in the attainment of objects so one will be left with no time for spiritual practices that's why one should be satisfied with whatever comes of its own accord according to one's destiny daiva labdena santosha and finally one should worship the lotus feet of those who know the lord atma vich charana archanam one should take shelter of the devotees and like minded persons and associate with them and serve them so that one develops their qualities and characteristics it's like that three verses verse number 2 3 4 and two syllables in verse number 5 explains about the rules and regulations yama and niyama so in verses verse 2 3 4 there are four items which talk about niyama which are uh, rules స్వధర్మ ఆచరణం సఖ్య విధర్మాచ నివర్తితం దైవాల లబ్ధైన సంతోష ఆత్మవి చరణార్చనం యమ ఐటమ్స్ ఇన్ ఫోర్ అండ్ ఫైవ్ ఆర్ పార్ట్ ఆఫ్ యమ ద రెగ్యులేషన్స్ ఆర్ మెన్షన్ ఇన్ ద వర్స్ నెంబర్ ఫోర్ అండ్ ఫైవ్ వర్స్ నెంబర్ టూ త్రీ ఫోర్ టాక్స్ అబౌట్ నియమ అండ్ ఫోర్ అండ్ ఫైవ్ టాక్స్ అబౌట్ యమ ద రెగ్యులేషన్స్ వాట్ ఆర్ ద రెగ్యులేషన్స్ నాన్ వైలెన్స్ వన్ షుడ్ నెవర్ కమిట్ వైలెన్స్ అగెన్స్ట్ లివింగ్ ఇన్ ఇట్ ఈస్ అండ్ వన్ షుడ్ నెవర్ స్పీక్ లైస్ వన్ షుడ్ నెవర్ స్టీల్ one should not accept more than necessary one should uh, practice celibacy one should never indulge in uh, uh, loose conduct and uh, one should remain silence and uh, these are uh, six are the uh, regulations then what are the other rules గ్రామ్య ధర్మాన్ని వర్తిశ్చ మోక్ష ధర్మారతిస్తీద్యాదనం శశ్వత్ వివిక్తాక్షేమ సేవనం వన్ షుడ్ అవాయిడ్ డ్యూటీస్ దట్ లీడ్ టు మెటీరియల్ అటాచ్మెంట్ గ్రామ్య ధర్మ నివర్తిశ్చ గ్రామ్య ధర్మ మీన్స్ ద డ్యూటీస్ ఇన్ రిగార్డ్స్ టు ధర్మ అర్థ కామ విచ్ ఆర్ మెన్ టు ఫుల్ఫిల్ వన్స్ మెటీరియల్ డిజైర్స్ సచ్ కైండ్ ఆఫ్ డ్యూటీ షుడ్ బి కెప్ట్ అట్ ఫార్ డిస్టెంట్ అండ్ వన్ షుడ్ బి కాన్స్టెంట్లీ అబ్జార్బ్ ఇన్ దోస్ యాక్టివిటీస్ which lead to liberation one should perform all those activities which take one to moksha one should not uh, be too much attached to activities of dharmartha kama instead one should be attached to the activities of moksha in that way one should eat pure food in moderate quantities mita medya adanam one should not eat too much one should eat moderately but pure food not the contaminated food not the sinful food and one should always live in a secluded peaceful place vivikta kshema sevanam one should stay in the association of the like minded people seclusion means only in the association of like minded people not with the people of diverse mentalities and one should remain peaceful one should not be too much attached as too much agitated by the surroundings so these are the some of the rules one should follow as a householder and uh, gramya dharma means dharma artha kama according to the smriti moderate quantity of food means the following one should fill half of the stomach with food what is the what do you mean by moderating half of the stomach should be filled with food and one quarter should be filled with water and one quarter should remain with air for a freedom of movement so this is the moderate eating not eating to the extent of the neck 
So for a yogi or for anyone, for a devotee or for sadhaka who is interested in attaining liberation should follow this uh, regulation. One should select a place which is solitary and also free from fear. One should not stay in a place which is always fearful. If one is always affected by fear, one can never ever focus on one's sadhana. So in that way. And further rules and regulations. Ahim satyam asteyam yavad artha parigraha brahmacharyam tapasaucham swadhyaya purusharchanam. One should practice non-violence, truthfulness and avoid theft. One should accept only what is necessary. Whatever is necessary in order to live comfortably, one should accept that much only. And not more than that for living. Because we want more and more, our life goes in earning more and more only. So for that, with that intention. And practice celibacy, practice austerity, practice cleanliness. And also, one should continuously study the Vedas and worship the Supreme Lord. Swadhyaya Purusha Archanam. These are the regular activities, day-to-day -day activities one should follow as a Gurastha. In the Gurukul, anyway, one does all these things. I mean, that means the study, Vedic study and other things. But as a Gurastha, one should follow all these rules and regulations. Then only one will attain the necessary detachment <clears throat> so that one can take Vanaprasa or Sanyas order and one will be able to continue. <clears throat> Entering into Anaprasa or Sannyasa is not so difficult, but continuing is very difficult. Unless and until one has a detachment temperament, one cannot uh, continue. So the temperament will be cultivated when we follow all these rules and regulations as a Gurastha. Since the time of one's marriage to the time one takes on to renunciation, one need to follow all these set of rules and regulations. And these rules and regulations are called as Yama and Niyama. Niyama are rules, Yama are regulations. So then, after living a life of detachment in the household order, then one is qualified to take on to Vanaprasa or Sanyasa. After taking Vanaprasa order or Sanyasa order, one should go to a forest. There, find a suitable place in order to practice Ashtanga Yoga. And that Ashtanga Yoga will continue with Asana, Pranayama, Pratyahara and other things. And the description about them is mentioned now. Maunam Sadasana Jaya Stairyam Pranajaya Shanai Pratyahara Chendriyanam Vishayan Manasahrudi So one should observe silence. Maunam. So Maunam is part of the regulations. This one phrase is part of the previous uh, discussion. And afterwards starts asana. One should attain steadiness by mastering correct asanas. Sad asana jaya styriam. One should be able to control one's body. The body is controlled. Body itself is uh, unsteady. Many times body does not allow us to sit at one place, stand at one place uh, continuously for a long time. The bodily inconveniences can be regulated by becoming expert in performing asanas. Having gone to forest, after finding out a suitable place, one should actually practice asana, especially the swastik asana or padmasana. So eventually the body becomes stable. That means body does not uh, uh, instigate us to okay, get up, move here, move there, and not like that. So... The purpose of asanas is to study the body. And then one should practice the control of breath. That is pranayama, pranajaya. Then the senses and the mind and intelligence are controlled by pranayama. Just like the body is controlled by asanas, the senses and mind and intelligence are controlled by the pranayama. Then the mind should focus on pranayama. Puraka, Rechika, Kumbhaka, etc. One should focus on that. The mind becomes steady. And then, gradually one should withdraw the senses from material objects to the heart using the mind. So, 
in order to become stable in pranayama in order to control the mind pranayama alone does not help even though while practicing pranayama the senses might divert one here and there the mind one might take one here and there so first one should control the senses my mind is so powerful we cannot directly control the mind so we should control the senses the senses generally look for something to get from outside world the eyes want to see something ears want to hear something the tongue want to taste something the mouth the nostril want to uh, smell something nice the hand want to touch something etc etc the five senses are need to be fed from outside world that is called ahara if they are fed excessively that is called atyahara if they are fed internally not from outside world but they are fed internally within the core of the heart that is called pratyahara the demands of the senses are fulfilled from the heart itself within the heart itself that is called pratyahara that means the senses are not looking anything outside the eyes does not want to look anything outside the nostril does not want to smell anything from outside the ears does not want to hear anything from outside the ears only want to hear om the om syllable which might be pronounced by the yogi while practicing ashtanga yoga is only focusing on the om the eyes are half closed they are neither looking not not looking anywhere outside etc etc so first the yogi is supposed to control the senses when the senses become steady by the practice of pratyahara slowly by the practice of other sadhanas like dharana dhyana samadhi the intelligence and mind also becomes completely controlled so like that one after the other one after the other one after the other will be controlled by taking shelter of all these different sadhanas asana one should attain steadiness by mastering correct asanas steadiness of the body and pranayama one should control the breath one should keep the breathing under control by practicing uh, uh, puraka rechaka kumbhaka etc and pratyahara withdraw the senses from the material objects and turn them toward the heart using the mind then after controlling the body after controlling the breathing after controlling the senses in order to control the mind then one should practice dharana dhyana and samadhi they are mentioned in the next verse swadishnyanam ekadeshe manasa prana dharanam vaikunta leela vidhyananam samadanam tatatmana one should fix the prana at one spot among the various chakras by the mind so basically by the process of dharana dharana one should raise the prana from muladhara chakra to swadhisthana chakra anath chakra agnya chakra all the way up to forehead so like that the raising the prana from one place lower part of to top of our part will be accomplished by dharana and also dhyana and while practicing dhyana one should meditate on the past times of the spiritual world one should meditate on the past times of the supreme lord while looking into the form of paramatma in the core of heart in the core of the heart basically dharana and dhyana can be accomplished by meditating on the form of paramatma while remembering various past times of the lord while looking into the form of the supreme lord then by raising the prana from muladhara chakra to ajna chakra and by meditating by making the mind focus on the various past times of supreme lord by looking into the paramatma form the mind and intelligence are completely controlled when the mind is completely controlled 100% is controlled then one enters into samadhi in samadhi state one will realize that one is atma not the body anymore the symptom of a person who had attained samadhi means one will realize that not theoretically understanding but one realize that one is the atma not the body neither the grass body nor the subtle body anymore that is the state of samadhi so dharana means fix the prana at one spot among the various chakras by the mind starting with the muladhara chakra dhyan then dhyana 
one should meditate on the limbs starting with the feet of the lord along with his past times <clears throat> then one should then attain the concentration of the mind the complete concentration of the mind the cessation of the mind along with the gross body and subtle body is called samadhi then one comes to the platform of atma one says i am atma one not only says one realizes that one is atma so that is the state of samadhi so like this as a grahastha after practicing yama and niyama after taking on to vanaprastha or sanyasa after going to forest after finding a suitable place when one practices asana pranayama pratyahara dharana dhyana then one comes to the samadhi platform where one realizes that one is atma not the body anymore few more additional details the same repetition of the eight limbs etair annaischa pratibir mano dushtam asatpatam buddhya yunjita shanakair ajita prano hi atandrita also engage in other methods such as charity and vows with the intelligence having control the pranas so as a grahastha one also perform other activities such as giving charity and practice some vatas vows etc then after going to forest one should control the pranas with complete attention then one gradually engages the wicked mind the mind which is always distracted which leads to one material life in meditation then by the practice of asana pranayama pratyahara dharana dhyana samadhi one engages mind in meditation satpatam that satpata that leads to liberation so if the mind is still contaminated then one should try to one should try to control it by uh, with intelligence do acts of charity and vow and by the control of prana and other things then after going to a forest where one should practice ashtanga yoga what kind of place one should select that is mentioned here suchaudeshe pratishthapya vijitasana asanam tasmin swasti samasena rujukaya samabhyasat mastering the asanas one should establish a seat in a clean place suchaudeshe very clean place and sitting in swastika asana keeping the body straight one should practice controlling the breath so what kind of place should be selected sucho deshe a clean place how one should practice asanas keeping the body straight by sitting in the swastika asan and then one should practice pranayama one should practice control of the breath by mastering the asanas establish the seat in a clean place sit in swastika asan keep the body straight so what is the meaning of um, what kind of place one should sit the asana should be made up of kusha grass covered with deer skin and covered with cloth so it should be made with kusha grass so that the forest insects are uh, repellent with kusha grass and deer skin they never ever climb onto kusha grass mat and also deer skin that's why the yogis when they go to forest in order to practice ashtanga yoga they make a seat with krusha grass mat and covered on top of that deer skin and top of that there is a small cloth so that it is uh, not pricking uh, so with that intention and that he should sit in swastika position what is swastika position placing the foot of one leg on the thigh of the other this is basically padma padmasan the left foot on the right thigh and right foot on the left thigh then he should sit and control the breath pranayama pranasya shodayen margam pura kumbaka rechakai pratikulena vachittam yata stiram achanchalam one should purify the passages of prana by inhaling holding and exhaling the breath or reversing the process so that the unsteady mind becomes steady so how to practice pranayama one should purify the passage of the prana by practice of puraka inhaling through the left nostril kumbaka holding the breath rechaka exhaling through the right nostril and then holding the breath and taking the breath in through the right nostril that is rechaka and then holding the breath kumbaka then exhaling through the left nostril puraka the order gets reversed 
So that like that one should practice pranayama. Mano chirasya vijar virajam jita shwasasya yogina vayu agnibhyam yataloham dhamtam tyajati vaimalam. Very soon the mind of the yogi who controls his breath will become pure. Just as heated gold gives up impurities by air and fire. Just like gold is put onto put on fire becomes pure. By the practice of pranayama and other things, the mind becomes pure. So, how does the mind get pure? That is indicated here. Pranayama er dosh dahir doshan dharana bischa kilbishan pratyahare na samsargan dhyane na nivasaran guhan by controlling the breath, one burns up the faults in the doshas of the body. By pranayama, the doshas of the body are destroyed. Kapa, vata, pitta are destroyed by the practice of pranayama. That's why in the nowadays, the pranayama is very popular all over, all over the world. Because by the practice of pranayama, the body becomes more and more healthy. So that is even negated here. The bodily doshas, kapa, vata, pisha are destroyed. And by dharana, sorry, by pratyahara, one destroys the association sense objects. Association sense objects are destroyed. Normally, senses are get attracted to outside world. By pratyahara, we are not allowing the senses to go outside. The senses attraction to outside world is destroyed. And by dharana, the sins are destroyed. So by focusing the mind on the form of paramatma, one's mind is not focused on sinful activities. So sins are destroyed. And by dhyana, uh, by meditation, one destroys uncontrollable qualities such as attraction and repulsion. The like and hatred, such kind of qualities are destroyed by the practice of dhyana. So these are the benefits of, immediate benefits of practicing Ashtanga Yoga. Pranayama, Pratyahara, Dharana, Dhyana will, will make our body good. The sinful tendencies, sinful activities are destroyed and mind becomes completely controlled. It does not disturbed by uncontrollable activities. Yada manaswam virajam yoge nasusuma ahitam kastam bhagavato dhyayet swa nasagrava lokanam. When the mind becomes purified thus by the practice of uh, asana, pranayama, pratyahara, dharana, dhyana, and study by yama and other angas, looking at the tip of the nose, one should then meditate on the complete form of the Lord. So, after living a life of dedication, living a life of detachment as a householder, then after taking on to Panaprasa or Sanyas, after going to forest, finding a suitable place, making an asana, sitting on Swasti asana position, and then controlling the breath, controlling the senses by Pratyahara, then one should practice dharana. So, in that dharana, one should meditate upon the complete form of Paramatma in the core of the heart. Dharana means meditating on the complete form of the Supreme Lord, who is there in the art of all of us as Paramatma. When the mind becomes steady by the practice of Yama and Niyama and other Angas, then one should meditate on the Supreme Lord by looking at the tip of the nose to avoid sleep and withdraw with wandering of the mind. So the both eyes should focus on the tip of the nose so that one will not fall asleep and one's mind does not go here and there. Then within the core of the heart, one should meditate, one should meditate on the form of Paramatma. So, what will be the form of Paramatma? What is the description of that Paramatma is very nicely presented from verse number 13 to 18. So, let us go through this. Prasanna vada nambojam padma garbaru nekshanam nilotpala dalashyamam shanka chakra gadadaram One should meditate on that form which is with joyful lotus face, red lotus eyes and complexion like a blue lotus holding conch, chakra and club. So, then one should meditate on the form of Paramatma who is very joyful, is, he has lotus face, red lotus eyes and complexion like that of a blue lotus and holding Shanka chakra, Gadapatma. So, the meditation as part of dharana, which is the sixth limba of Ashtanga Yoga, is as good as smaranam for a devotee. When we go to the temple, we see the form of the deity. And uh, for some time, we 
completely gather the beautiful form of the Lord. The same thing the yogi does. Within the core of his heart, he gazes at the complete form of the Paramatma. This meditation on the Lord, the third Anga of the nine limbed bhakti process known as Maranam, become the sixth dharana and the seventh dhyana process of Ashtanga Yoga. In yoga, this is for attaining liberation, for attaining Sayajya Mukti. Taking this opportunity, Lord Kapila described the form of the Lord used by both devotees and yogis for the purpose of meditation. Though only three limbs, three items are mentioned in the Lord's hands, the fourth item, the lotus also should be included. The shloka only talks about Shanka Chakra, Gada, Padma also we need to include. So this is the form of Paramatma, who is like the blue lotus, eyes are like red lotus, and his complexion is like blue lotus. His face is very joyful and smiling, and he had four hands holding uh, Shanka Chakra, Gada, Padma. This is the beautiful description of the form of Paramatma. Then, what are the more attributes of the Paramatma form? Lasat Pankaja Kinjalka Pita Kaushaya Vasasam Srivasta Vakshasam Brajat Kaustu Bamukta Kandaram. He wears silk clothes, the color of glowing lotus pollen. Lord wears yellow silken cloth, hello Pitambara Dhoti. Okay. Has Srivasta on his chest. Lord has Srivasta on his chest on the right side. Srivasta mark is there. And has the brilliant Kaustuba on his neck. So this is the Kaustuba Jewel. Here is the Kaustuba Jewel, the brilliant Kaustuba Jewel on his neck. And uh, tied with a golden thread. The Jewel is tied with the golden thread. So this is the beautiful description of the form of Paramatma. Further it is mentioned. Matta Dvirepa Kalaya Paritram Vanamalaya Parardyahara Valaya Kiritangada Nopuram. He wears a garland filled with the sweet humming of intoxicated bees. Matta Dvirepa Kalaya. Dvirepa means those insects will have two wings. So, with the wings, with the movement of the wings, they are actually producing nice music. So, he is holding a wonderful Vanamala a forest flower garland because all the flowers have a lot of uh, fragrance and a lot of nectar. The honeybees are uh, hovering around the form of the Supreme Lord making beautiful musical sounds. He wears priceless necklaces, bracelets, crown, armbands and anklets. All those things you can see here. Priceless necklaces, armlets, bracelets, mukot, earrings, etc etc all wonderful beautiful ornaments are described so like that is beautiful form is presented and then kanchi gunolas churonim rudayam boja vistaram darshaniyatmam shantam mano nayana vardanam his hips shine with the cords of his belt lord wears a beautiful belt so with which the Lord's form looks very beautiful. He sits in the lotus heart of the devotees. The Paramatma is always situated in the heart of the devotees. When, the, when our heart becomes pure like a lotus, then we'll be able to see the Paramatma. If our heart is covered with dust, we'll not be able to see the form of Paramatma. It's like that. He is most attracted to see Darsha Niyatamam is the object of our vision. When we look at the beautiful form of the Supreme Lord, our eyes, our mind will be attracted to him, want to see more and more. Only when our, when our heart is pure, we will be want to see more and more. It's like that. And that Lord is completely peaceful, is not at all agitated. And increases the joy of the mind and eyes. Mano nayana vardhanam. The happiness of the eyes and the mind increases by looking at the beautiful form of the Supreme Lord. This is what we should get. When we come to temple, when we see the deity form, especially on the festival days, when the lordships are given uh, new outfits, new dress and new decoration, all the devotees are eager to have darshan of the Lord for long hours. So there is a competition. I want to be in the first row. I want to be in the first row. It's like that. Then it further continues. Apivya darshanam shashvat sarva lokana maskrutam santam vaisi kaishore brutya nugraha kataram he is beautiful and worshipped by all people. 
the lord swami is very beautiful and um, he is worshiped by all people sarva loka namaskrutam he is eternally situated in as at 15 years old shashvat kaishora vayasi the lord is always 15 years old his age does not increase uh, maybe we take some questions at the end of the discussion it may dis- disturb the flow and he is eager to bless his servants the lord is always eager to bless the servants vritti anugraha kataram see the beautiful form of the supreme lord who is always eager to bless his devotees so it's like that kirtanya teertha yashasam punya shloka yashaskaram jayad devasam samagranam yavanna chavate mana one should meditate on this form of the lord with all his limbs who is worthy of glorification who increases the fame of the devotees and until the mind does not deviate as long as mind can continue to focus on the complete form of the lord one should practice to meditate on that so when mind becomes steady on the form of the supreme lord then one can enter into dhyana the next stage till then one need to meditate on the complete form of the supreme lord and this meditation on the complete form of the supreme lord is called as dharana and that beautiful description of the lord form was mentioned and then dhyana means then after looking at the complete form of the supreme lord then one should meditate on each and every limb starting with the lotus feet the lotus uh, legs thighs abdomen chest neck face within the face eyes nostril mouth etc etc that step by step progressive increase in order one should slowly meditate that is called dhyana so that is mentioned in the next section sthitam vrajantam asinam shayanam va guhashayam prekshani prekshani ehitam dhyaye shuddha bhavena chetasa with one's heart filled with pure emotion one should meditate on the lord living in the spiritual world has he stands walks sits or sleeps and performs pastimes worthy of seeing then one should meditate on the different limbs of the lord while he is performing various pastimes some of the pastimes are performed while he is standing some of the pastimes are performed while he is walking some of the pastimes are performed while he is sitting some of the pastimes are performed while he sit, sleeps like garbhodaksha vishnu karanaksha vishnu etc etc all these different pastimes are need to be meditated while uh, looking into one one posture of the supreme lord then it continues tasmin labda padam chittam sarva vaya samastitam samstitam vilakshayekshata samyujad ange bhagavato muni the sage having concentrated his mind on seeing the lord with all his limbs should concentrate on one limb of the lord at a time after perfecting one's meditation on the complete form of the lord then one should practice the meditation on each and every individual limb of the lord complete form of the lord is called dharana individual limb of the lord is called dhyana so thus having described the whole form of for meditation lord kapila now describe the meditation on the individual limbs from the next verse onwards so this we call it as smaranam it is also mentioned in the second canto of bhagavatam there is a the beautiful description about dharana and dhyana so one should firmly meditate with the intelligence on each limb one after the other starting from the feet up to the smiling face of the lord after practicing concentrating on one limb one should give that up and proceed to the next limb as the intelligence gradually becomes purified the purpose of meditating on each and every limb is to purify our mind and intelligence after completing that meditation then should one go to next limb next 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 like like that one should come up to the beautiful smile of the supreme lord so this is called as smaranam as part of bhakti and as part of ashtanga yoga this is called as dhyanam so now let us see how gradually one should raise one's meditation from the lotus feet all the way up to the lotus smile of their lordship so this is the first verse the meditation on the 
to lotus feet of the supreme lord sanchintayet bhagavata charanara vindam vajram kuchasvashasaro rulalanchanadyam uttunga rakta vilasan nakachakravala joshna libir ahata mahad prudayandakaram here it says that one should meditate on the lord's lotus feet marked with a thunderbolt elephant god actually this is thunderbolt this is elephant god flag and lotus which destroy the great darkness of the heart with the brilliance of the rays of his gleaming raised red toenails so here you see as lord krishna deity we see in the temple one feet is stable other feet is slightly raised when this feet raised we will be able to see these toenails these toenails are brightly shining with red color that will destroy the darkness within the core of our heart that is indicated at the same time while looking at the lotus feet of the lord we should meditate upon these different marks on the lotus feet of the lord one should meditate on the elephant god ankush below the little toe of the right foot this is the little toe this is the right foot and here is the ankush elephant god and below the elephant god is a thunderbolt vajrayudha below the next toe is a lotus below the next one is the lotus and below the lotus is a flag dwaja and below the big toe is a barley corn here is a, supposed to be a barley corn and then a chakra and other items like such as umbrella and swastika mark etc etc the foot is thus adorned with variety of marks these are all the different foot marks are there in the lotus feet of the supreme lord so thus one should meditate on this for some time then on this and this and this like that each and every symbol one should meditate after perfecting meditation each and every symbol one should go to the next one so it will take lot of time after completing the meditation all the symbols on the two lotus feet and then meditating on the toe nails of the two feet of the lord then one should continue with this meditation echrausa nishruta sarit pravarodakena teerte namordni adikrite na shiva shivo bhut dhyatur mana samala shaila nishushta vajram dhyaya chiram bhagavata charanara vindam then one should meditate continually upon the lord's lotus feet after meditating on the marks on which are there on the soles one should meditate on the two lotus feet the water washing which the ganga flows and makes the auspicious lord shiva who holds the ganga on his head more auspicious lord shiva who is already auspicious by holding ganga which washes lord's lotus feet makes lord shiva more auspicious the ganga which is coming from the lotus feet of the supreme lord which is collected by lord brahma with which lord brahma performs abhishek of lord's lotus feet and then that that water becomes charanamrut and holding that charanamrut on his head lord shiva who is already auspicious becomes more auspicious the lotus feet acts as thunderbolt which is released among amongs the mountains of sins in the meditator's mind our heart where mind is situated is filled with lot of anarthas lot of sinful desires and on the lotus feet of supreme lord there is thunderbolt when we meditate on thunderbolt just like indra's vajra is destroy the mountains at one go this meditation thunderbolt will destroy the sinful reactions which are there in our heart so that is the purpose for which we need to meditate thus after describing the sweetness of lord's lotus feet lord kapila now describe the power of his feet lord shiva becomes additionally auspicious by placing the sacred water of the ganga which is flowing as the wash water from the lord's feet on his head then lord shiva thinks that i am become fortunate i have become fortunate i have become more and more fortunate thus a devotee meditates on the foot marked with the thunderbolt being released upon a mountain of sins of of the meditator by meditating on thunderbolt the sins are destroyed the mountain of sins are destroyed then by meditating on the elephant god the mind 
which is like elephant which is uncontrollable gets controlled and goes in the right path by meditating on the lotus the padma one's mind becomes like a lotus flower very peaceful very beautiful by meditating on the flag one develops the kingdom of the mind, highest kingdom to the mind the mind becomes attracted to the kingdom of godhead that is vaikuntha by meditating on the flag and the lotus feet of supreme lord the mind becomes attracted to journey back home back to godhead by meditating on the barley corn one gets the highest fame of being a devotee then by meditating on the umbrella one becomes relieved from the tapatraya adhyatmika klesha adi bhautika klesha and adi daivika klesha and by meditating on chakra one gets complete protection of the supreme personality of god just like ambarish maharaj protected from the fiery demon created by durvasamuni so like this by meditating on each and every individual limbs of the lord one gets purification of the heart attachment toward the devotional service and attachment toward the abode of the supreme lord vaikuntha and one is completely one completely comes under the protection of the supreme personality of godhead so like this each and every verse very nicely presents by one's meditation on the different body limbs of the lord gradually one one's mind becomes purified and becomes attracted to the pastimes of supreme lord and develops attachment to attain perfection of one's life so like this there are many verses we are already reached the end of the time so we'll have a couple of minutes for some discussion if some devotees have anything and the remaining verses we will discuss in the next class and concluding the perfection of ashtanga yoga in the next week on 12th of this month so in between couple of devotees raise their hands they can also ask some questions for few minutes and then other devotees also can ask if they have any questions hare krishna you can unmute and ask hare krishna hare krishna dandas pranam prabhu ji anutna prabhu ji while mentioning the vana prastha and sanyas uh, that time you were telling about uh, that in uh, chapter 28 you have <clears throat> you were telling about the performer of ashtanga yoga and you said that he leads a life of uh, complete renunciation and performs ashtanga yoga and at the same time he he uh, practices bhakti also mm. yeah and then he attains sayuja mukti mm. but uh, and sometimes he attains uh, srashti or salokya mukti so when he uh, when he performs bhakti mm. when someone performs bhakti mm. how he can attain sayuja mukti uh, we will discuss next week because next week discussion is all about that only what what will be attained by the ashtanga yoga practitioner so for your information for now i'll tell you practicing either karma jnana yoga is like performing activities with our gross body and subtle body practicing karma is like performing activity with our gross body practicing jnana or yoga is performing our activities with our subtle body and practicing bhakti is like breathing are you getting yes can you perform any bodily activities without breathing no that means we cannot perform karma in its proper expected order without little bhakti in it yes same way can we perform any activity through subtle body no without breathing yes no no without, without breathing, breathing we, we can't cannot. perform anything yeah no we cannot perform without same breathing. way without little amount of bhakti we cannot even practice jnana or yoga jnana karma jnana yoga all practiced in association with bhakti bhakti is a integral element which is not visible outside so much it is like the breathing we are breathing but we are not conscious of our breathing when uh-huh. we are performing activity we are conscious of what we are doing but we are not conscious of breathing like that bhakti is a integral part of karma jnana yoga 
So for, for your kind information, we are discussing about the karma, jnana, yoga as a traditional Varnashram system. And after next week, we will be discussing bhakti, exclusive bhakti. What, how devotees practice bhakti. We are not talking about devotees as of now. We are talking about the karma practitioner, jnana practitioner, yoga practitioner who also need to practice bhakti as an integral part, as a secondary item, just like breathing is performed unconsciously. It's like that. Yeah. That means not only Kevala Bhakti, he, they are doing uh, along with Bhakti, other things also, Karma and Jnana, and therefore they uh, don't get... They are practicing Karma, Jnana, Yoga along with Little Bhakti. Little that, Bhakti. That is the yeah. proper understanding. Yeah. Okay. So thank you. Okay. Other devotees? Okay. I have mentioned this, I mean, today discussion will be special because the slides have all these beautiful photos in the in it. If we normally discuss there, no, we don't have the opportunity to show the slides, so we miss this. That's why I said. Anyway, I share all the slides with you. Uh, you can go through the slides at your leisure afterwards uh, till whatever point we discussed. And um, in the next week also, you can see the slides for the next week discussion also. So, Prabhuji, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Prabhuji will have a oh, yeah. this uh, photo you have displayed is very beautiful, but where this is uh, Garbodak Sagar, uh, Sagar, hmm. Sagar's photo. Prabhuji, this photo we will discuss next week. We have not started discussion about it. If you have any oh. questions about what we discussed till now, kindly ask. Okay. If there are Prabhuji, no questions. No question. Yeah. yeah. We'll have a short kirtan, Prabhuji. Yes, Prabhu. We'll have a short kirtan. Yeah. So, yeah. thank you very much for all the devotees for joining. So, since it is rainy day, we could not meet, but anyway, we had this online platform. Thank you very much. We'll continue next week. Hare Krishna. Prabhuji, there's, there's, one question, there's one question in the chat box, Prabhuji. If you can just take that question. Difference between grass body and subtle body. Grass body is made up of the fleshy body, whatever fleshy body we have, it is made up of earth, water, fire, and ether elements. And subtle body is made up of the subtle senses. We have 14 subtle senses within our personality. The five Jnanandriyas, the five Karmendriyas, and uh, four Antakaranas, Manbuddhi, Hankara, Chetana. So all these things, all these 14 things put together makes our subtle body. So that is the distinction between grass and subtle bodies. Yeah, meditation on the lotus feet means initially we need to meditate beneath the souls. All the symbols are there. Then meditate on the lotus feet from which the Ganga manifested. It's like that. One after the other, one after the other. Uh, we will uh, able to discuss. Next week we will continue the further details. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank, thank you very much. Bhajanita uh, Prabhuji, can you just uh, do a little kirtan? Prabhuji, can I request you to do kirtan? Haribol, yes. Just give me a minute. Very bold. 